This is MRN Out Loud, brought to you by Hercules Tires. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of MRN Out Loud, getting ready for the regular season finale this weekend at Daytona. The Coke Zero Sugar 400 comes your way Saturday night, and Ryan Newman is on the program. He will have the Coke Zero Sugar car and be trying to race his way into the playoffs. A little bit later on, William Byron will be along to preview the race as well. But first, the playoff rounds of the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series are here. There are only four races left in the season. Ten drivers will be competing in the playoffs for the 2021 eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series Championship. The first round of the playoffs starts on Tuesday, August 31st at the virtual Darlington Raceway. Catch all the action and the iRacing countdown to green at enascar.com slash live at 8.30 p.m. with the race starting on enascar.com at 9 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday, August 31st. This iRacing update is brought to you by Logitech G. Through design, engineering, and a love of driving games, the Logitech G923 takes racing simulation to another level. Logitech G, the official wheels and pedals of the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series. Ryan Newman is next. Gamers, start your engines. Meet the next generation of racing wheels. The award-winning Logitech G design is re-engineered to dial into your game physics, delivering unprecedented realism. Feel every shift, drift, and hairpin turn like never before. Our latest innovation in force feedback technology connects directly to end-game simulation engines and physics to produce higher fidelity, real-time responses. Through design, engineering, and the love of driving games, Logitech G takes racing simulation to another level. Go to LogitechG.com. Citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there no matter where the road takes you. Go to HerculesTires.com. There you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retail location to you, plus you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTires.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Ryan Newman drives the number six Coke Zero Sugar Ford Mustang at Roush Fenway Racing. You can catch him on Saturday night at Daytona, the World Center of Racing. And Ryan, the last chance for you and about a dozen other guys to race your way into the playoffs. And it's always crazy at super speedways anyway, but how much more crazy is it when you've got that last chance element plus a lot of guys who are just trying to accumulate a few more points as they head to the playoffs, all those different agendas rolling around? Well, I think that. So no doubt the guys that are trying to race their way in are going to be a little bit crazier than the guys that have already raced their way in or have pointed their way in. So, um, you know, we, um, we're going to be a part of that uh, first group uh, because of where we're, where we're sitting in points. But um, really, really excited and proud uh, to be a part of uh, Coca-Cola Racing family, uh, to have the Coke Zero Sugar uh, Ford Mustang this weekend. And uh, even equally as important, or may, if not more, um, to celebrate the life of one of the Coke family members, uh, Joan Salter, which she'll have a decal on the car, which she, um, she was, she's been a part of the Coke family, um, from a, from a management side for many years and just recently passed. So i um, really, really honored to have her decal on the Coke zero sugar car for this weekend in, da in Daytona. Oh man, sorry to hear that, but I'm glad you're going to honor her. Uh, I got a chance to see the paint scheme yesterday and I'm curious, do you ever have any hand in those or are you as surprised as everybody else when they come out? Cause it looked really sharp. Yeah, it did look sharp. Uh, you know, last weekend looked sharp with the IT savvy car and, and uh, those guys do a good job designing that stuff. Uh, and like I tell people from where I said, I can't see it. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, but but in the end, I want the fans to be uh, excited about it. And, uh, you know, it's it's um, it's great to be a part of the Coca-Cola racing family and, and the amazing things that they do. Looks really fast. And let's talk a little bit about super speedway racing in general. You, of course, everybody knows the story. Last year's Daytona 500 had the, the horrific wreck there, came, came back, bounced right back, and you led a little bit at Talladega this year. Super speedway racing, I mean, does it make your brain tired? Because it's not physically demanding as some tracks, but, man, playing chess for two or three hours uh, nonstop would seem to be mentally draining. It is a mental race. Um, you know, obviously it's physical, but it's more biased to mental than any other thing that we do. And then I guess probably the emotional side of it's equally as important because uh, because of the mental side. Uh, but ultimately, uh, you got to put yourself in the right position. And I've I've actually I think I've said it to you before, if not somebody else in in the past. Um, I've actually been in in the um, in the battle to get to the lead. And once I got to the lead, 
got tired. Like I just physically, like I had, I had achieved something and and leading and uh, looking out the mirror was a totally different mental game than it was trying to get to the lead. And, um, you know, I realized shortly after that, that I need, needed to stay awake because it wasn't going to last forever. But, um, you know, that just tells you the power of your mind in those situations and the, um, the power of adrenaline, um, because I can't fall asleep after a race, but I mentally got tired in the middle of a race while the adrenaline was still pumping. So that tells you how crazy it gets at times, just trying to get to the front and, and uh, you know, playing defense and, and guarding your race car. Are you one of these guys who goes back and studies tapes to go, man, I wish I had done this there or that there, or in a race like this, I mean, you could do everything right and still have it, uh, you know, have it wind up in a wreck. I, um, I've been watching the 1976 Daytona 500 and practicing my slingshots. Uh, so <laughs> no, I mean, I don't watch tape, but I, you know, I have seen plenty of it and been a part of most of it. And, um, you know, over the last 20 years and, and, um, you know, it, it, it just changes. I mean, you look at this past weekend, the race at Michigan was different than at least than I thought from what we had seen there in the past and, and the way guys were drafted and, and giving up drafts and some guys pushing and some guys not. And we got different rules this weekend. We've, you know, we've got a different um, engine package, I guess you could say, in the, in the power output. And we've got a different uh, spec with the body because the wicker's off the rear spoiler. So the drafting characteristics, I think, are going to change a good bit. I don't know if that means we're going to be the same, better or worse. But um, we got 400 miles to, uh, to figure that out. Let's talk about some of your other racing because I saw you went to uh, Indy and did the, the BC 39 honoring uh, Brian Clawson. And uh, tell me why that type of racing, you do the modifieds as well, appeals to you so much. Because uh, I was telling uh, Brandon, your PR guy, when, when you're at those events, you seem like a, a little kid at Christmas who's waiting to open his packages. Yeah, it's, um, I do it because, to answer your question, I do it because it's fun. Um, but mo more importantly, I guess you could say, um, the, the BC 39, uh, we're sponsored by Driven to Save Lives. I'm a spokesperson for Driven to Save Lives and just uh, getting the awareness out there about organ donation and what, sh what we all can do if we haven't already to sign up to be an organ donor to save lives. Um, it could be your family. It could be somebody else's family. Think about it. Uh, come around uh, the, the holidays when you are um, got an opportunity to spend some time with your loved ones. Uh, know that you might put somebody else in a seat to get presents. Um, know that... Um, when you have the opportunity to go sign up for a hunting or fishing license, all you got to do is check a box, um, go to, go to driven to save lives.org and the Indiana donor network, which is home for me being from South Bend um, has been very impactful. And, and that was a lot of fun to, um, to be up there for that race represent um, Brian Clausen and his family, Clausen Marshall racing, drive the driven to save lives car, have a special person that we had on the, um, on the, the name on top of the car was Brooke Sander. Um, she had passed away, was an organ donor, was very instrumental with Driven to Save Lives. All those things tie together and make it special, albeit we didn't make the feature, but we had some fun, got some good racing in, and um, you know we'll, we'll do it again. That leads to my next question is about the unusual type races. I mean, looking back at this season, you had a top five at Bristol Dirt, a top 10 at Darlington, which is just ridiculously tough, and then a top 10 on the Indy Road Course, a home game for you of all places. What is it about these kind of unusual races that seems to bring out the best in you? Well, unfortunately, it took a bunch of guys getting crashed out at Indy for us to get that top 10. But um, nevertheless, um, you know, I feel like I'm competitive and capable every racetrack we go to. Some, some more than others, no doubt, um, just because, like I've always said, when you go to Daytona and Talladega, you're holding it wide open. You're more of a product of your car and some racing luck than you are um, your talent and your abilities uh, as a team or as an, indiv as an individual. So, um, you know, it's different, um, and um, those, those races you, na you named are different, no doubt, and uh, we've still got a bunch of those left to go this year. So we, we want to get more top tens, hopefully some top fives, and be in contention for a win. That's, that's ultimately what um, would be fun at this point. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about silly season. You probably don't know what's going to happen in 2022 yet. None of us do, I guess. But what do you want to do? The announcement came out earlier that Brad Keselowski is coming over to Roush Fenway next year. What does Ryan Newman want to do in 22? I want to race. I want to have fun. I want to spend time with my kids. Uh, you know, I want to live out their dreams and goals and, and uh, you know, livelihood and, and be a part of that. So I really don't have an answer on what I'm doing. I don't know. Um, I know what. I ultimately would want to do is race for uh, for a championship. Uh, I don't know that those opportunities are out there and have access to equipment like that. Um, so I'm just going to do what makes the most sense for me. 
And let's wrap up with this, Ryan. I always love to ask you what's going on at the Rescue Ranch because I know it's near and dear to your heart. And I saw on social media you guys have a special event coming up uh, in September, a, a family event, right? Shoot, I don't even know. That's, that's in September. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure there's some. I'm sure there's some events going on in RescueRanch.com is a website you can go to learn more about it. But I haven't even been briefed on that one yet. So um, yeah, I'm sure there's there's some opportunities out there, and, and just um, you know. It's great for our community to do what we do uh, to educate kids about animals and and, and uh, their welfare. And we we as humans are ultimately responsible. And um, you know I appreciate you mentioning something, but I don't have the details on that one yet. All right, well check out the website to find out more. It's a really interesting place. I think it's September 18th is the Family Fun Day. Check it out at RescueRanch.com to find out more. Ryan, appreciate your time. I know you got to get back to work here, and good luck this weekend trying to race your way into the playoffs. All right, thank you, Woody. Sir, are you aware you were going 40 miles an hour? This is a residential area. Sure, but I'm on my lawnmower. Wait, am I getting a ticket? No, I've just never seen anyone top 9 miles an hour on one of those bad boys. And mow their entire lawn in 30 seconds? What got into you? Well, it did fuel up at Sunoco this morning. At Sunoco, we know how to fuel peak performance. We've been doing it for American Racing for over 50 years. Fuel your best. Daytona International Speedway, the last race of the regular season, and you don't have to worry about that whole bubble battle this year. But what was it like, that sensation, when you won your way in? How stressful was that? Oh, it was stressful. Um, for most of the race, I'd say it was just kind of one of those game seven type type moments that you go into and, you know, it's do or die, which which is kind of nice. I, I like that sensation and that feeling. But, um, you know, honestly – it was interesting how that race played out, you know, with Jimmy getting in that crash um, really kind of changed things for us on the points perspective. All we had to do was pretty much finish the race. And, um, and that took a lot of pressure off of me to, to go and try to win the race. And so I think in that, in that 10 to 15 minute time frame when we had the red flag was really a, a mindset change of man, okay, maybe we can go win this race now um, and not have to worry about the points, which was nice. So I think, um, you know, try to try to go there stress free this year and um, definitely be uh, kind of watching those guys and entertained by the guys who are on the bubble because I was in that position last year. Now I want to kind of watch them them have to fight it out. Has the way you race there changed even in the time that you've been in the Cup Series? Because all these guys would have a strategy like, well, I'm going to hang out in the back until the end or I'm going to try to get out front and run away. What has it evolved to now? Yeah, it's it's really dynamic. Um, with the stages, I feel like you've got times that you go really hard. You've got times that you relax and kind of let the car, um, find its way, but, um, you know, stage points are critical. So if you can get the stage points, but also you don't want to, you don't want to wreck right before the stage and, and, and go out of there with, you know, 40th place points. So it's a really tricky balance. Um, I feel like for us, we're probably going to race for one of the stage wins if we can, um, and then try to position ourselves for the end. Citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there no matter where the road takes you. Go to HerculesTires.com. There you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retail location to you. Plus, you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTires.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. That's all the time we've got on this week's edition of MRN Out Loud. We'd like to thank Brian Newman for joining us, as well as William Byron, as we get set for the regular season finale coming up Saturday night at the World Center of Racing in Daytona. Until next week, I'm Woody Kane saying thanks for joining us on MRN Out Loud.